That used to be my job in the summertime. Cleaning up my yard for me. I think we've got a plan. All right, I've got enough of them. Let me make sure that they work with the, the crankshaft. I've got a set made up for a fella. And I'm going to test them out on the set of cases here. Make sure everything works fine before I set them out. You know, little chamfer. This is easy to get started. That's the key with me. Yep, it is. So that is a win. These bushings aren't that easy to do on the manual lathe because I have to get a very slight angle right there. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit of fiddle farting around, but I think that's the best way of doing it. Well, put another set of tools together, and I think the only way I know to test these darn things, make sure they're okay, is to use them. I've added some finishing operations to the face here on the last few I've been doing. I think they look a little bit better. Do they work any better? Yeah, I don't know. And I've changed dimensions on this just a little bit. So... Yeah, this is just pretty much the generic stuff, so let me get some oil on it and uh, put these things together. You know. Well, this one's prolapsed. Questions, can I salvage it? Well, I might be able to. Well, I was actually able to get that one to go back. So, what I recommend is, on the on this side, is take turns on t every once in a while, instead of just pulling it straight through like I did, is, uh, you know, when you start getting into where that's a half inch away, start turning this and then pull a little bit and then turn that, pull a little bit. I think I did that on a video. Maybe I'll do another set of cases.
so you can see that. Because this one here, this one here prolapsed, and I was able to go like this and turn the crank and push in with this and actually get that little bit that was hanging out to go back in. So, so this is my saw and nobody else's saw, and no one ever is going to use this saw. I'm just going to let it be. If this was a saw that was important, I'd pull that better Noe MCL in with a seal driver. You know, but I look, I think that's okay. It looks okay now. Yeah, it settled back. But again, you pull the crank a little bit, take a turn, and then even if you have to loosen up the tool to spin that around to, to let that crank work its way through and make sure there's a lot of oil on that seal, otherwise it'll do what this one did. But I was able, since it was only a little piece, I was able to push it in with this, and it looks like it's fine now. You know, it does happen. Maybe I'll do another case just to prove the point. All right. Once you have that side pulled through, um, I'm a little bit of a chicken. I, I uh, basically 11... 84 pretty much everything But you really shouldn't have to the gasket the whole idea of the gasket is so, so you don't have to do that so in the spirit of The way things should be I'm just gonna put the gasket in here and squeeze it together instead of going through all the effort of uh putting gasket sealer in here. It looks like it is. But I'm going to get to about there, and I'm going to, at this point, I'm going to run the screws and just to make sure everything is lined up properly. Just a little bit. No, no tension on them. Just get them run in there so they're threaded. And I'm just going to make sure the crank isn't stuck somewhere. And I'm just going to run it right home. And hopefully, if I've done my job properly, that crank is nice and free in there. And there you go. This set of cases is now done. All right, let's center the crank. Okay, I need to tap the clutch side just a little bit. This is why these things have to bottom out. You know, if you're going to do, and you don't hit them hard because you'll fold it right up. Just. really close to being centered and it's turning nice and free. Good seal tension. That seal came in nice and that one had prolapsed but I pushed it back and it looks like it's just fine. And Maybe that's a good exercise to see whether or not that in fact is true. 
Let me see if I can find another set of cases. Stick together. Well, while we're on a roll, let me stick together another set of cases. Got in there. And also, the reason I'm going through this exercise again is I want to show you how to pull through that clutch um, seal with a better chance of not prolapsing like I did. So let's just do that and then I'll be done with these tools and they will have been proven and I can send them on their way. But yet again I'm going to put some oil on things and I think putting oil on the surfaces is actually a little more important than people realize. So make sure that crank is good and oiled up. Especially there where the seal is going to ride. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of oil in that bearing. And in the seal. So the seal is really gooped up pretty good. And I'm going to do the same on this one. A little bit of oil in that bearing. And quite a bit of oil on the seal. So those, those are really gooped up. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just like last time, is get that crank pulled through the PTO side bearing here. In some respects, this is the easier one because you don't have to worry about where the crank is relative to the case. Now, the lip is right at the seal right now. So when we start pulling, I'm going to start turning that crank to try to keep that um, from, pro from prolapsing. So now, let me get the handle on. I guess I should have put the handle on first. I guess it doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to turn that crank. Sometimes it's a little bit stiffer than that. Sometimes you'll have to go like this. Just back that off and then uh, turn it. Spin the nut back on by hand. And see, it did not prolapse. Not at all. And that turning technique has served me pretty well. So, so let's take the bushing off. Take the nut off and put it on the other side. Let's pull these cases together. What I gotta do now is spin the nut up a little bit. Now let me see how centered that is. That's not bad. 
Well, I'm going to mix a little bit of the just for fun in with the with the work, and bring this saw up to at least a closer spec than it is right now. See, it doesn't have the better handle. I mean, I'm not going to really go out uh, logging with this thing here. It's more for fun, and so I don't care if I have the better handle on here. Although I have a hunch that I may eventually change that. But what it does need is it needs the OEM trigger and choke. And it also needs the OEM bar studs pretty much desperately. So that's what we're going to do on this saw is do that. And then put it back in the retirement home. Get some of these hyper tough washers in there. This, this saw here is kind of funny because um, between it and the Farmer Jones, this one has actually less modifications. The Farmer Jones has got finger ports and all kinds of stuff. Believe it or not, this thing runs just as good. And interestingly enough, I bought a 9-pin for it. I've got it in there somewhere. And boy, it ripped when I put a 9-pin on there. And it actually pulled it quite well. Now... This one has the uh, a muffler mod. Um, it has a base gasket because you really can't do much with the old big bores. This is one of the original style big bores. The first cylinder I put on this, the one you saw in the video, was the later style big bore. And the, the bore was terrible. The, the plating was terrible. And how they had honed the plating was terrible. So I went back to one of the original style 56 millimeter cylinders on this and run it ever since and believe it or not it actually is not quite as snappy as that one that really was junk so sometimes even junk runs well and it did it didn't really die i just looked inside and i saw all this this stuff in there and i didn't like it and sure enough when i pulled it apart i had caught it before it had failed so i can't honestly say that it had actually failed but I think it was well on its way to failure. Yeah, it's that hard. Okay, that's part one of this project. Part two is to get the right trigger components in that saw. I've kind of gone through all of mine and done this. This is the last one that I didn't do. Oh, did I say this is not a practical build? But like I said before about one of my other saws, it may be ugly, <laughs> but it's my kind of ugly. Believe it or not, this, this saw actually has had a fair amount of use. Just remember how that goes in. That wire goes underneath there. Throttle rod comes out. Trigger comes out. I 
I just kind of pry up under here to pop this up and out of there. Notice that it's in this configuration. It comes down over the top of. Set that right there. Get the junk out of here. Take these and throw them away. Do not keep them. The throttle rod goes over the top of this darn thing. And it kind of sits right back in there. Goes in like that. Just take the new trigger, set it right next to the old trigger. Take that spring and just do kind of like that. The new trigger sits right down where the old trigger was. Throttle rod goes up to the top. This goofy thing. Spring goes underneath it. And it sits right where it used to sit. Right there. And once you get that all in there, this guy goes up here and just sort of squeezes everything all together. Let's just do a function check. Yep. I now have high idle in this one. See, I can set high idle like that too. Let's see if I can get in the camera. See it? So this one now has a high idle setting as well. Look at that. Moving things along one saw at a time. Now I believe all my saws have now been modified. Oh, I know what I did to this carburetor. This carburetor is one that had the removable jet, like a Walbro. So I actually had put a Walbro on this saw. Boy, it made a difference. Picked up a bunch of RPMs on top because what was happening was it was just simply running out of fuel. You know, it wasn't enough carburetor, enough fuel to, to feed the darn thing. Which was funny because really the big change is just that intake. You know, big bore and a muffler mod. It's about it. That's why I call the bling saw versus a modified saw. It's just bolt-ons on a big bore. But boy, does it rip. Anyway. I'll put the air filter on it and put it back in the retirement home and I think it's uh, going to be a, a day for me. It's been a long day. I have another saw I have to flash and check the, uh, well I have another 562 I've got to flash the carburetor on and uh, take a reading on the carb to see if that saw has got some problems. I suspect it does, you know, the guy is complaining about lean conditions. The local shop that dealt with that one, not the one in town, but another one, has said, oh, you know something? We did a smoke test on it, and therefore it must have a tight bottom end. I'm like, yeah, maybe. So <laughs> um, I'll probably do a leak down test on it and, and just see for sure. So anyway, talk to you later. Bye for now. So of those must-dos, which have been done on this saw right here. It has the OEM seals under the caps. That was pretty early on. It's got the OEM choke lever and trigger. Just did that. That carburetor has been quite a bit tweaked. Both the throttle plate is, you know something? That throttle plate is actually one that came off of Walbro. That's right, to that carburetor. I did two things. Is because it had the removable main jet, I upped the jet size and I put a different throttle plate in the carburetor itself so it would actually close. Husky decomp, um, OEM bar studs and nuts. It actually has a different drum too. It doesn't have the uh, the, the drum from Farmer Tech. And it's got a muffler mod. 
I had to swap back to a standard top end, the old style, because the new style fragged. And I think I have different dogs or sprags, or whatever you want to call those things in this pull start. But other than that, that saw really is just bolt-on stuff. And it's a lot of fun. This came from Definitive Dave, one of the earlier ones. And the later ones got ribs on it, you know. Uh, kind of like other things with ribs that probably not necessary if <laughs> you got the right size. But, but anyway. Talk to you later. Bye for now. Good running, old saw. That's some fun. See if it'll go into gear. Get a new tank. This one here was cracked. That's no good. And kind of topped up a line from Walmart. And I was a little nervous yesterday when I first kind of started about how much of a stream it had for the cooling system. Basically, that tells you whether or not the Cooling system is pressurized and there's water up at the top end. That was a lot better today, isn't it? Got a little rubber nozzle. So I poked that up in there and cleaned it out. I was afraid it was going to be the impeller, but unfortunately it wasn't. I'll put a, I'm going to put an impeller in there anyway. So far, the only thing I've had to do to that motor is unplug the nozzle on the telltale and I had to take the uh, fuel pump off because the fuel pump and the carburetor were full of oil. That's it. This is a motor that came off the landfill. So if RAF was it wouldn't run. Well I'm sure it would run with a fuel pump full of oil if it couldn't open and close and full gasoline up in there so it was all clogged up with oil. So, one of those cases where you just got to go back to basics. Pulled off the cover, pulled the plug, it had spark. So I said, okay, that's spark, got compression. Then started pulling fuel lines and realized there was no fuel to get to the carburetor. And pull lines and pressurize with the bulb and realized that the fuel was getting to the pump and not past the pump. And pulled it apart, it was full oil. My, what I suspect is, since that's a four stroke, it has a crankcase full of oil. It was laying on its side for a long period of time. And that oil just weeped into the places where it shouldn't be. So, but anyway, there it is. Good stream. Something every old man likes to see.